So welcome to module 4.3. In this module, we will discuss about the hack CPU in great detail. We have seen what the hack computer will look like. The computer comprises three things, the uh, ROM where the instruction memory will instructions will be stored and then the CPU and then the data memory. In this particular module, we will see the CPU in detail. Look at this particular, this is the topmost view of the computer, uh, the hack computer. You see an instruction memory here. The instruction memory is a read only memory. So, this is a built in chip that will that is available for us. We have not built a read only memory, it is already available to us and we can use that. What is the difference between the data memory and the instruction memory? Nor you do not write into instructions, you basically only read instructions. So, the CPU will not write the inst into instruction memory, it basically reads the instruction memory and executes the instruction. So, that is why instruction memory will be a read only memory. And this memory can <coughs> is of size 32 kilobytes. And then there is a data memory which is read write memory. So, we can read and write into data. And so, this is the CPU which we are going to discuss in this module. The CPU there is a reset which is given externally to the CPU. The reset will go and reset the program counter the D register and the A register. There are three storage elements as we had mentioned so far. There is a D register, a, a register and the program counter and these three are basically reset when you give the reset pulse. And the CPU will take the instruction one by one from the instruction memory. Which instruction it will take? That instruction which is pointed out by the program counter. That is the instruction it will take. So, that please note that there is indeed a link from the CPU to the instruction memory which is through the program counter. Once the program counter is sent to the instruction memory, it will send the instruction, the corresponding instruction. The CPU has to interpret that instruction, execute that instruction. As a part of that execution, it can read from the data memory. If the source operands are memory, then it can read from the data memory in which case it gives the address and it basically collects the data or it can also write into the data memory in which case uh, it can write into the data memory uh, in which case it has to give the address, it has to give what data to write and it also have to enable the memory, the load of the memory to see that in this particular address the corresponding data is written. So, all these three uh, the two activities the CPU can do with the data memory. So, this is the overall organization. Now, what we will understand in this module is an instruction comes a 16 bit instruction basically flows from the read only memory to the CPU and how does the CPU basically executes it. Now, very quickly to recap, what are those 16 bits in that instruction? The 16 bits, the instructions are of two types again A instruction and C instruction. Now, if the first bit, the, the so we call it 0th bit to the 15th bit. So, if the first bit is 0, then it is an A instruction. If the first 3 bits are 111 or for our addition, if the first bit is 1 for sure, then it is a C instruction. If the first bit is 0, it is an A instruction. If the first bit is 1, then it is a C instruction, right. If, if for the A instruction, the remaining 15 bits is value and this value will be basically stored into the A register. So, if I have an A instruction, these values will be stored into the A register. And similarly, if I have a C instruction, then the entire thing happens, then there are these uh, uh, we have to interpret this 13 bits. The first there is an A bit that will tell you whether the source operand is from the A register, the source operand to the ALU, one of the source operands. So, the A register has two source operands, uh, the ALU has two 
operands source operands x and y this a register the a bit small a bit will tell you whether one of the source operand is a a register or from the memory. So, if a is 0 then it is from the a register if a is 1 then it is from memory right so, and the other operand to the ALU is always the D register okay. So, that is basically done here then the C1 to C6 will tell you what sort of computation the ALU has to do on the two inputs that it is receiving and that we have seen. Then D1, D2, D3 will tell you the destination and J1, J2, J3 if they are set if they are non-zero will tell you if there is it is a jump instruction or not. So, essentially this is how the entire uh, uh, C instruction is int uh, interpreted. Now, let us see how the architecture would look like. So, we will just have this table this is already the same table uh, that we have seen in the thing. So, when A equal to 0 please note that uh, the whole thing is the ALU does x, x comma y as inputs right. The x is always d y will be a when small a is 0 will be m when the small a is small a is 1 ok. So, the y will be between a and m and that is what you are saying while where a equal to 0 you see all a's here instead of y and right and while while a is a is 1 you will see instead of a you see m ok. So, this is this is the way we interpret and these are the 6 bits. Now, the destination please note that if d1, d2, d3 are all, all zeros, then there is no destination then perhaps this is going to be the jump instruction. But when you have d1, d3 bit is 1 that means the destination is memory, d2 bit is 1 then the destination is d register, d1 bit is 1 then the destination is a register. So, you see 0, 0, 1 the destination is just memory, 0, 1, 0 destination is d 0 1 1 the destination is both the memory and the D register and when I say M it is nothing but which memory location the address of that memory location is stored in the A register that we have seen in the earlier modules right. So, so, so this is how uh, the D register the D bits D 1 D 2 D 3 are basically interpreted. Similarly, the J1 again 0 0 0 means no jump, 1 1 1 means unconditional jump, but remaining thing J3 stands for out greater than 0, J2 stands for out equal to 0 and J, J1 stands for out less than 0. So, so this is basically given here and so this is so when the when the CPU sees non-zero value on the J bits then it is a jump instruction. Right. So, so that is how the CPU has to interpret the instruction. So, very quickly we have seen how the uh, instructions are going to be uh, organized the each instruction what each bit means. Now, we will quickly see how the CPU is basically built. Now, this is the building of the CPU nothing scary about it let us go register by register. First thing is let us take the ALU what are the inputs to the ALU if you go back and see the ALU has the 6 computation bits which tells you what we need to compute ok. The 6 computation bits are uh, necessary. So, the 6 computation bits basically comes in from the C1, C2. So, this is the uh, your instruction this is the 15th bit of the instruction this is the 0th bit of the instruction. So, your 15, 14, 13, 12. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, your 6, 2, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, 6 to 11th bit is basically given as input to the ALU. Just follow this green uh, dark green line, then it is given as the compute bit to ALU, right. Now, what will the ALU basically uh, get as an input? 
always it is going to get x is always d. So, this is the d register and x is always d. So, this gives the d input right and <coughs> right and x is the d register and the other input is either the output of the memory or the A register depending upon the A bit. A bit is the 12th bit here. So, if you say 0 to 12th instruction bit follow this red line as I am marking here when the when the A bit is 0 then the output of the A register goes to the ALU. When the A bit is 1 the in M that is coming from the memory right. So, if you just uh, see go back here the in M is coming from the data memory that in M uh, is basically given as input. So, the Y input for the ALU is depending upon this small A bit the 12th bit in your instruction it can be the output of the A register or the output of the data memory right. So, this basically comes. So, this is this mux as you see is the a 16 way uh, 16 bit mux or mux 16 wherein 16 lines come here 16 lines come from the data memory 16 lines come from the uh, A register and this mux depending upon the small a bit will route one of those 16 to the ALU right. And the ALU will output there is an output of the ALU and the output of the ALU always goes as out M. It goes to the memory and it should also feed the D register ok. It should also feed the D register it should also the output of the memory. Uh, output of the ALU um, of course, there are two outputs let us see this the ZR and the NG which basically talks about the 0 and the uh, uh, not greater than uh, flag right. So, that is uh, here, but in addition to that the output of the uh, ALU uh, the, uh, the 16 bit output can a will be fed to the D register and will also be fed back to the A register right because the destination for an ALU the destination for an ALU uh, can be uh, the memory the D register and the A register that we have seen here. So, the destination for the ALU can be the A register as you see here the D register or the memory. So, the output of this memory basically goes output of the ALU goes to the memory also comes back to the D register and also comes back to the A register right. So, what should go into the A register now this we have just seen the ALU now what should go into each one of these registers what should go into the A register if it is a a instruction that means your t bit is 0 right then your t bit see this brown line if your t bit is 0 then the 15 bits that are coming from the instruction should go into the A register. If the t bit is 0 then the 15 bits so how does your A instruction look 0 and then this is the value this entire value should go into the A register. So, this should basically go into the A register right. When your T instruct T is 1 that means it is a C instruction then the A instruction the A register will be updated A register will be updated only if it is a destination right. So, that means when will A register be a destination? the A register will be a destination when the D 1 bit is set to 1. When the D 1 bit is set to 1 your A register will be in destination. So, this is how this will um, happen. So, 
So, your A register will be loaded when your T bit is 0 or when your T bit is 0 it will be loaded and it will be loaded when your T bit is 0 or your T bit is 1 and your D1 bit is 1. Right? So, because when the D1 is 1 then A becomes a destination the result should basically come the output of the ALU should be loaded back to the registry. So, we have the load for the A register will be uh, tilde of the T bit that is the type bit that is the 15th bit plus other T bit is 1 and D1. So, when we when you optimize this logic this is equivalent to say tilde T plus D1. Okay. So, this is tilde T or D1. So, so, tilde T or D1 would be the uh, uh, condition that the A register will be loaded at the end of this instruction, right, of a given instruction. Similarly, what will the A register be loaded with? When a T bit is 0, the 15 bits from the instruction will be loaded. When the T bit is 1 and your D1 is 1, then the output of the ALU will be loaded. So, essentially here again you have a MUX 16, you have a MUX 16 here which will take the entire instruction. So, we take the 16 bits of the instruction anyway because at some value this value should always be non-negative, it cannot be a negative value. So, the non-negative value you are going to put it as 15 bits. So, if I put a 0 in front of that 15 bits still it will become a non-negative value. The value will not change and it will be a no, same but with 1 bit extended to 0. So, though when I say <coughs> though when I say act of value that 15 bits have to go to A register the 16th bit the most significant bit will always be 0 anyway. So, so and the A instruction the 16th bit uh, the, the six, uh, 15th bit that is 0 to 15 this most significant bit is anyway 0. So, we can take the entire instruction and put it here. So, and also the output of the ALU uh, is also routed here and A will come here. Okay. So, what will happen? So, now this is uh, given. Similarly, for D, for the D register, um, so when will the D be loaded? At the end of the instruction when D is a destination and how do you, how do you know that D is a destination? D will be a destination when your T bit is 1 and, and your D2 is 1, it should be a T bit and D2 should be 1. So, essentially you do a at this point you put an AND gate, this is the T bit and this is the D2, this is D1, D, this is the blue line is the D2. So, this will give me T and D2 and that is what will be the load condition for the D register and what will it be loaded? The output of the ALU. And when will the memory be loaded? The memory will be loaded when the T bit is 1 and your <coughs> D3. So, D3 basically says that the thing is memory. So, your D3 will be loaded. And always the address to which the memory should be loaded is the A register. So, this address M is basically going to the a register, okay, right. So this is this is about the uh, different registers. Now, <coughs> now the last thing that we need to see here to understand this entire architecture would be this PC, the program counter. So, what will the program counter do? when reset the program counter will become 0. So, the reset is given to the reset of the program counter right and 
otherwise the program counter will be basically uh, there are other things it can be incremented it can be loaded or it can be reset when the reset comes the reset is the program counter will be reset that is the highest priority otherwise when a jump comes this will be loaded when a jump comes this gets loaded and if it is not if it is not reset and it is not a load then if it is a normal instruction then it is getting incremented. So, increment is always not of load reset is highest in the prior, prior, priority. So, in, irrespective of what is increment or load when I reset the program counter will reset for sure. Now, if it is not reset that we have seen when the PC has been designed. So, you can go back to that module and revise it if you, if you have some doubts on that right. Otherwise, now your PC has to get uh, loaded. When it will get loaded? When it is a jump instruction. If you are not loading it, then it is a non-jump instruction that then it automatically gets incremented. So, your increment will be not of load right. So, so you know what is load we will see, but once you design that load your increment will be not of load. Now, what is load? Load is you have a T it should be a C type instruction and right and then please note that if it is a unconditional jump then J1, J2 and J3 this stands for unconditional jump. If J1 and J2 and J3 are uh, true or it is a conditional jump that is uh, it is out greater than 0 it is a conditional jump say J3 is set out is greater than 0 and so we just say that the jump should take off when out is greater than 0 and really out is greater than 0 how will how will I find out whether out is greater than 0 your ZR should be uh, non-zero that means out, output is not 0 and the output is also not greater than it is output is also greater than 0 tilde ng means out is greater than 0. So, you just see here tilde ZR means out is not 0 and out is greater than 0 that means uh, out is greater than 0. So, J3 and tilde ZR and tilde ng ok that will. So, if my J3 bit is set that means we go and say that take a jump if your out is greater than 0 and so you go and test whether out is greater than 0 using the ZR and NG flag and J3 is set then that means you have to take the jump. Similarly, J1 essentially means out is less than 0 right if J1 is set here and NG is really then, then we have to take the jump and similarly J2 and ZR, J2 is out is equal to 0 and really out is equal to 0 because this is set. J2 says that you take the branch when uh, output is equal to 0 and ZR says that output is indeed equal to 0. So, so these 4 conditions capture out equal to 0, out less than 0, out greater than 0 and jump unconditional jump and all these things provided your instruction is a C type instruction. If it is a A type instruction then these can be these are only values these are these cannot be interpreted as J D bits this J C A bit interpretation comes only if it is a C type instruction. So, that is a C type so that is T and this and if this is true that means the jump has to be. So, this is a jump instruction and the jump has to be taken and the jump has to be taken to which address that address will always be in the A register that is what you say. So, if the load is true then the load value comes again from the A register as you see here. So, the PC when reset will come to 0 when the load is true essentially means it is a jump instruction. So, which instruction should I dump? Uh, so, that is that is always in the A register. So, that A will get loaded here and else it is just incremented. So, incremental will be tilde of load. So, this is how 
the PC is basically done. So, the entire so now we have constructed the ALU, ALU is available for us. So, you can use it, we have constructed MUG 16. So, connect the output of A and uh, the instruction into MUG 16. You instantiate, so in the uh, chips you can instantiate a MUG 16 and uh, you can instantiate two MUG 16s, uh, two, one AND gate, one R gate as we see here, I am just marking two MUG 16s here and here, one AND gate one R gate and one, one A register, one D register and of course, this ALU and connect these corresponding instruction bits to each one of them and then uh, of course, the PC and you have to realize this sort of big logic okay. uh, and of course, you have done the PC, use the same PC. So, it is now just that we need to realize one AND gate, one R gate and of course, this slightly larger logic and of course, increment will be tilde load. Once you realize all these logic, then use the MUG 16, uh, use the uh, 2 MUG 16s you can instantiate and then the already designed ALU and already designed PC and the D and A register and you can assemble the CPU and uh, run the CPU. So, this is how the CPU is basically built and one very important thing that we need to understand is this the instruction comes from the row memory as we have seen here. The instruction comes from the row memory, it feeds into the CPU and this is how the CPU interprets the uh, memory and then it basically executes. So, when that instruction comes here, so we just say tick that means the instruction has come here. So, then what will happen? Uh, so, based on the instructions. Uh, the uh, based on these instructions, these multiplexers will be start working and the corresponding inputs to the ALUs will be available here. The corresponding inputs to the ALU, ALU will compute and the corresponding output of the ALU will be available, right. So, when the instruction comes immediately your MUX will start working, MUX will be the both the MUXs that you are seeing will get inst instantiated and so and then it will be ready. So, the output will be calculated that is on a tick when the instruction arrives then this whole thing is a combination logic it will come. Now, the results of the uh, ALU will be available out right. So, the result of the ALU will be available and if it is a jump should I take the jump everything would be available. In the talk what will happen the result of the uh, the clock will go tick tock right. In the talk what will happen? The result of the ALU depending on wherever the destination is whether it is a D, A or M or whatever uh, or a combination of all these things it will get stored in the corresponding uh, stuff okay. T A and M, D, D register or A register or the memory it will go and uh, stay. At the same time if it is a jump instruction this whole thing would be ready and when in that uh, talk, talk of the clock, T O C K of the clock, the P C basically will get the, uh, the new value. If it is a normal thing, it will get incremented. If it is a jump, then it basically gets the value from the A register if the jump is to be taken. If it is a con unconditional jump, automatically A will come in. If it is a conditional jump, then depending upon the uh, uh, results status, whether it is equal to 0, less than 0 or uh, depending on the ZRNG flag, the conditional jump will take or not take. So, this is how the uh, whole thing. So, one thing that you should understand is tick of the clock, the instruction flows from the, uh, the instruction pointed to by the PC. Please note that this PC, PC feeds to the uh, ROM 32K. So, the PC basically uh, feeds back to this, right. So, on the, on the tick of the clock whatever the, from the ROM the instruction gets into this uh, the input of the CPU and then it does the computation and that the talk of the clock the results are stored back in DA, DA and memory depending upon the destination or in the case of jump 
the PC gets updated accordingly. So that the next tick, the next instruction flows from ROM. So this is how the uh, whole CPU basically works, right. So what I, I will do now is uh, basically uh, uh, <coughs> I am just going to keep this slide up for a few, I will I will just uh, remove off these comments that I have made here. So please note that this is T and D2 that is feeding this T register of course this is 0 to 15. So the entire HDL code that we are going to write as a part of your project file would be a very very simple code okay. So just a few lines of course you will take some amount of time to write this logic for uh, this load okay and uh, so that will be some, some set of lines. But overall the entire project for the CPU, just the CPU is just close to some 10 to 15 lines of code. Um, just we have to instantiate all these things having understood this CPU. So it is a very simple exercise, okay. So in the module uh, 4.4, we will demonstrate the working of this entire CPU with a live uh, case study. Thank you.